ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय We're reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, sixth canto, chapter one, entitled "The History of the Life of a Jamila." Text fifteen. Kechit kevala ya bhaktiya, Vasudeva parayana, Agam dunvanti karsniena. Niharam Yuva Bhaskaraha Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Śrīla Prabhupāda Ki Only a rare person who has adopted complete unalloyed devotional service to Krishna can approve the weeds of sinful actions with no possibility that they will revive. He can do this simply by discharging devotional service just as the sun can immediately dissipate fog by its rays. Purport. In the previous verse, Shukadeva Goswami gave the example that the dried leaves of creepers beneath a bamboo tree may be completely burned to ashes by, by, by a fire, although the creepers may sprout again because the root is still in the ground. Similarly, because the root of sinful desire is not destroyed in the heart of a person who is cultivating knowledge, but who has no taste for devotional service, there is a possibility that this, uh, his sinful desires will reappear. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.4, Shreyaksitim Bhakti Mudasyati Vibhu Klishyanti Ekivala Buddha Labdaye Speculators who undergo great labor to gain a meticulous understanding of the material world by distinguishing between sinful and pious activities, but who are not situated in devotional service, are prone to material activities. They may fall down and become implicated in fruitive activities. If one becomes attached to devotional service, however, his desire for material enjoyment are automatically vanquished without separate endeavor. Bhaktih parisha no bovo viraktir anyatra cha. If one is advanced in Krishna consciousness, material activities, both sinful and pious, automatically, automatically become distasteful to him. That is the test of Krishna consciousness. Both pious and impious activities are actually due to ignorance because a living entity as eternal servant of Krishna has no need to act for his personal sense gratification. Therefore, as soon as one is reclaimed to the platform of devotional service, he relinquishes his attachment to, for pious and impious activities and is interested only in what will satisfy Krishna. This process of bhakti Devotional service to Krishna, Vasudeva Parayana, relieves one from the re reactions of all activities. Mm. Since Maharaj Parikshit was a great devotee, the answers of his guru, Shukadeva Goswami, concerning Karmakanda and Jnanakanda could not satisfy him. Therefore, Shukadeva Goswami, knowing very well uh, the heart of his disciple, explained the transcendental bliss of devotional service. The word kechit, which is used in this verse, means a few people but not all. Not everyone can become Krishna conscious. As Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita 7.3, Manushya nam sahasra shu kaschit yatati siddhaye yatatam api nam kaschin vamviti tattvataha. Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and for those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Practically, no one understands Krishna as he is, for Krishna cannot be understood through pious activities or attainment of the most elevated specul speculative knowledge. Actually, the highest knowledge consists 
of understanding Krishna. Unintelligent men who do not understand Krishna are grossly puffed up, thinking that they are liberated or have themselves become Krishna or Narayana. This is ignorance. Since the commentary, the purport is quite long, uh, we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. So uh, today we continue our discussion <clears throat> um, on topic how to cleanse our heart. Mm. Here uh, in this chapter will be given the history of uh, the life of Ajamila. Um, <clears throat> and the question uh, was in the beginning of this chapter, um, how can one be liberated from, from sinful reactions? Because in the uh, fifth canto, it is a description of different uh, hellish planets and sufferings uh, connected to, to those planets. And um, the problem is, as described uh, here, um, uh, it is said a few verses before. Um, yes, what was uh, how it's I forgot the verse. Uh, that basically um, one can be uh, cleansed of his reactions by different uh, methods but he again starts to uh, perform sinful activities <laughs> it's like a, a bathing of an elephant um, so what's the point of performing any such uh, pious activities kvachin nivartate badrat kvachit sharati tatkuna prayashitam ato partam manye kunjara shochavat prayashitam means um, penance what here says prayashitam the process of atonement yes process of atonement or penance to perform some some atonement process of atonement to be liberated from from uh, sinful reactions, but if one again starts to commit sinful uh, deeds, uh, he will just suffer life, life after life after life. It's no use of his life actually. Just repeating uh, what was already repeated so many times and just repeating the suffering again and again and again. <laughs> it's crazy actually if one thinks deeply. It's crazy. And in previous uh, two verses that we discussed yesterday, um, Shukadeva Goswami uh, described another um, approach to, to sinful reactions. And, um, and these are great austerities and penances and, and uh, um, developing knowledge, deep knowledge about who we really are. And by this process we can not just wash away these sins, but can even burn them. But the root remains. <laughs> uh, and these sins will grow again and again and again. Uh, like weeds, if they are not uprooted, they will uh, grow again and again and again. And I believe you have experience here because you work with, with the land, uh, with growing uh, vegetables, so the weeds are also growing. <laughs> yes, so <clears throat> that was not a solution. Um, actually, nothing is a solution without the bhakti. As it is explained in many times, in many different places, um, and by Lord Krishna himself also. 
without bhakti nothing can be achieved um, the process of jnana or process of yoga or process of karma they have no power even to bring its own um, result without bhakti so they they are all depending on bhakti only bhakti is paramasvatantra that means completely independent completely independent yes so um, one would think why would anyone engage in in other processes than than bhakti what do you think why why people engage in other processes if it's cl- so clear that only bhakti can uh, bring any result and not that bhakti uh, brings any result we want but also if it is uh, purely performed as we discussed in this verse completely uproots all sinful reactions with no possibility to return <laughs> So my question for you is why people perform other processes? Yes. Because they think they will achieve some happiness. Definitely, yes. Uh, they believe that they will achieve some kind of happiness. Not enough faith. Yes, yes. There is no faith actually. Faith. Uh, in the process of devotional service is the only qualification that we need for bhakti. Yes. Um, it is explained that Yadrichaya Matkatado Jatashradu Tuyakpuman Nanirvino Nati Sakto Bhakti Yoga Sasidita. That if one acquires somehow or other Yadrichaya, the word is Yadrichaya. Somehow or other, God knows how. <laughs> uh, if, if we d- develop faith in Krishna Kata, then we are qualified for Bhakti. Yes. For other processes, uh, one also needs faith. It's not um, some exemption that we need faith. For everything we do, we need faith. Yes. Everything in this world, we need faith. Yes. If you go from mm, Burgas to Varna, uh, and you go to uh, a bus that says Varna, and instead of uh, going to Varna, you go to, to Sofia, you'll be uh, very, very uh, angry at the driver because your faith uh, was was abused <laughs> we can say <laughs> yes because you had faith that this bus will go to varna but instead it went to to sofia yes so uh, in in all dealings in our life we have to have faith so uh, also bhakti yes and we Our, our life is based on faith. For example, we went in, uh, to school and whatever knowledge we acquired is just based on faith. Who has performed uh, different scientific research, researches to find out if, uh, if what I, I was taught is, is correct or not? No one has performed any research. Uh, we just accept on the basis of faith. So everyone has faith. Even a little child acts on faith. You say to the little child, if you'll be good, you'll get a candy. <laughs> and child believes, yes, and tries very hard to be good, <laughs> to get the candy. Yes. So... Everyone, even most staunch atheists, uh, his whole life is based only on faith. 
and nothing else. So one should have faith, not blind faith, but scientific faith. And scientific faith is faith in Shastra. Mm -hmm. yes. And Shastra also um, even demands someone to, uh, to inquire about absolute truth. Yes, it was Janma Safolian. No, it was it was what is it was it was a different verse, but I forgot uh, how it goes. It was Eva. It was Eva Biki. This is the fourth verse of Chatur Shloka of Bhagavatam. Um, this is the beginning. This <laughs> that we should inquire about absolute truth uh, in all circumstances directly and indirectly and at all times this is the injunction of Srimad Bhagavatam and this is our Abhidaya uh, because in these different shlokas of Chatur Shloka of Bhagavatam different processes different uh, yes, uh, stages of, of uh, Prayojana and and um, Sambanda and Abhidaya are given. And this is the verse of Abhidaya. How can we achieve perfection? How can we achieve our prayodhana, our goal? Is to inquire about absolute truth. That means that Vedas don't support spiritual laziness. We should inquire. We should not take anything blindly in our life. Yes. So... We should know from Srimad Bhagavatam that only pure devotional service has the power to completely uproot any trace of sinful uh, desires from our heart. And Prabhupada this uh, compares to switched off fan. Maybe because of conditionings, this fan is still rotating for some time but it's switched off completely so it's just a matter of time when this fan will stop completely yes so if we uh, perceive that we have still some material desires uh, but if we perform pure devotional service uh, then these desires are uh, just a matter of time when they will completely go away. Even now, maybe we have conditionings to, to enjoy certain things that are not beneficial for our spiritual consciousness, but um, we understand that this is not beneficial and we want to get rid of them. This is proper proper attitude and this will bring us uh, to the uh, desired go yes and this is krishna prema but if we don't have uh, we don't perform pure devotional service then uh, it's not possible to achieve the goal of pure devotional service yes we should understand this deeply because many times uh, devotees think um, that it's impossible to perform pure devotional service have you heard something like this? How can we perform pure devotional service? Because we are not pure. Have you heard mm. such way of thinking? Yes. Yeah. yes. But we should practice pure devotional service. <laughs> we should not practice mixed devotional service. Uh, if we practice something impure, our goal will be impure. Because our sadhya or our goal is dependent on our sadhana. So if our sadhana is not pure, 
then our goal will also not be pure. So, uh, therefore, it is explained as we also discussed yesterday, Anya Bilashita Shunyam, Jnana Karmadi Navrita, Anukulina Krishna Nushilana Bhakti Rutama. Yes. And we should uh, practice pure devotional service. That means that we haven't achieved, maybe, um, the goal of pure devotional service, but we practice it. That means that we want to get rid of all material desires. If we don't have this striving to get rid of all material desires, that means that we don't practice pure devotional service. If we want, if we, if we want at, um, mm, retain certain attachments in life, whatever these attachments may be, for family, for fame, for knowledge, for uh, money, for some position, for security. If we um, retain these desires, or, or, or we think maybe that there is nothing wrong with these desires, then um, we don't practice pure devotional service. And it's not possible that we'll achieve the uh, goal of pure devotional service. Not possible. Yes. And the problem is that people in this material world, especially in Kali Yuga, they think that process, all processes are mechanical. <laughs> that you just perform something uh, on the surface outwardly and the goal will come on its own. But this is great illusion. Maybe for something it's possible and that we uh, do it like this, but this is not Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is uh, the process of consciousness, not process of um, proper dress or uh, what, we, we sp what sound we produce with our tongue or uh, anything like this, or how we worship the deity. Uh, of course, we worship the deity, we, we chant and so on, but it's the question of consciousness. It's a question of consciousness. Yes, as explained by Rupa Goswami, we can perform uh, different sadhanas for many millions of births intense sadhana even, but will not achieve the goal of sadhana with uh, improper uh, approach. Because Krishna is saragrahi. For example, um, when Krishna came to, to Hastinapur to, uh, to negotiate for peace before the war of Kurukshetra, uh, he was uh, received with great honor by Duryodhana. And he knew that Krishna uh, is fond of Kirtan. So the best Kirtan groups were hired to receive Krishna. Yes, with the best kind of Kirtan possible. And great feast with the most choices, uh, choice, uh, delicious uh, preparations were prepared for, for Krishna's uh, reception. S uh, and, and everything was in gold just for Krishna. And a special um, throne was prepared, golden throne inlaid with uh, special, uh, precious gems and, and diamonds just for Krishna. <laughs> One would, would think he really cared that Krishna would be satisfied. And he did. <laughs> but his consciousness was not devotional. His consciousness was um, very selfish, actually. Uh, he envied Krishna's devotees. And he didn't want to serve Krishna's devotees. He didn't want to serve Krishna either. He wanted to, 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 uh, to have some gain from his service. And maybe we don't have such uh, 
um, blunt, uh, how to say, um, so obvious, uh, devious um, mentality as Duryodhana, but we, we may have subtle expectations from our devotional service. Understand? Yes. Maybe we have subtle expectations uh, for, for safety. Say we, we may uh, be afraid what will happen to us. Um, and so we perform devotional service with this idea that then I will, I'll be accepted by devotees and I'll be, uh, it will be cared for me. And the same kind of mentality, but uh, more subtle, that maybe even we don't understand that it's not pure devotional service. That we have some motive in life, which is not pure. So uh, we have to pray to Krishna to reveal us our mm, bad motives, our motives that are not pure that we can get rid of them if we don't know that something is um, not beneficial for my spiritual growth. Now, how can we uh, progress in devotional life? Not possible. And usually people think that some kind of Great tapasya will bring them desired goal. For example, today is Ekadashi, and if one fasts Nirjala Ekadashi, <laughs> one may think that uh, this will automatically bring some goal. And it is recommended that we fast and so on. But it is not recommended to expect something in return. Uh, but it is meant for um, to dedicate your time uh, for Krishna's service. Yes. Uh, because if we don't dedicate our time for Krishna's service and we just take fast, complete fast, what's the use of this fasting? Instead of... Um, skipping food to have more time for, for our bhajan, we do some nonsense. <laughs> so better to, to eat prasad <laughs> than to do this nonsense during this time. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we should utilize our time and everything, our energy, just for service. And nothing else whatsoever, says Prabhupada in <laughs> some, some uh, essay about devotional service. Uh, in, even before he came to the West, in uh, his back to Godhead from uh, maybe early 60s or late 50s. <clears throat> yes, very interesting. And there are many examples of this. Um, if we don't take shelter in Krishna, it's not possible to get rid of, uh, rid of uh, our material desires. So our main focus in devotional service should be taking shelter. Taking shelter. Yes. Uh, it's Sharanagati. Surrender. Mm. Surrender, actually, Sharanagati means take, taking shelter, actually. Mm. Yes. Sarva dharmam paritajya, mam ekam sharanam praja. Take shelter of me. Yes. Sharanam is, is the same word, uh, word as Sharanagati. Yes. Take shelter of me. Yes. Um, Yes, and for example, we can take example of, of great munis. There was Saubari Muni. Have you heard about Saubari Muni and his story? He, he heard that many munis 
were distracted from their their spiritual path by some uh, heavenly girls <laughs> and therefore he decided that he will perform tapasya on on the bottom of of yamuna river that nothing can disturb him no girls can come in the on, in the bottom of, uh, of of the river so he performed for thousands of years tapasya on the bot in the bottom how it's properly in the bottom on the bottom Huh? Yeah. Uh, on the bottom. On the bottom. Yeah. Yes. On, on, on the bottom of Rio, he performed uh, great tapasya for thousands of years. Um, but the problem is that these girls are not are not outside. Maybe they are. But. Uh, the great greatest problem is that they, they are inside our heart <laughs> and then what happened he saw he didn't uh, he didn't see a girl he saw fish two fishes <laughs> playing what can one think when we see a fish fishermen see fish every day and no strange thought crossed their mind. <laughs> because, uh, because they have other life, so they don't bother about fish. <laughs> but uh, he was so disturbed by <laughs> some play of fishes that he broke his meditation after thousands of years of meditation and went out and married 50 girls. Yes, he went to a king and he, want, uh, he said, I want to marry. <laughs> and this king was terrified because after thousands of years of, of sitting uh, on the bottom of a river and, and fasting, <laughs> he looked terribly. <laughs> And uh, he wanted uh, to marry his daughter. And, um, and he was terrified because he knew these, these guys, these yogis can curse you. If they become angry, they can curse you. And who knows then what will happen to me if this guy will curse me. So he was smart. And he said, okay, because he was extremely ugly person and old and, and you can go and if any of my daughters will like you like to marry you she can marry you no problem <laughs> and he was of course was sure that <laughs> no girl would like this guy <laughs> but he was smart too <laughs> uh, he 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 changed in uh, his form to a handsome young man <laughs> and then all 50 daughters of this king fell in love with this <laughs> with this young man and this is another uh, example of suppressed feelings these young daughters uh, who were not allowed even to see uh, a boy they also had these desires in their heart. Yes. So when the opportunity came, uh, they all wanted to marry him. Yes. And he expanded into 50 forms and married all of them. <laughs> yes. So strong was his desire to enjoy. Yes. After thousands of years of penances, Yes, so we should know no process other than devotional service will uh, eradicate our, our material desires. No process. Kechit kevalaya bhaktiya, kechit. Some, some person maybe, some people, kechit, uh, will be interested. 
Kechit Kevala in Kevala Bhakti. In Kevala Bhakti. So we should know what treasure is in Kevala Bhakti. And we should strive only for Kevala Bhakti, not mixed devotional service. Never strive for mixed devotional service. Yes. Kevala Bhakti. That means I'm completely dependent on Krishna's mercy. This is the first requirement. I'm dependent on Krishna's mercy. Whatever Krishna does is perfect. Yes, we should have this faith. If we don't have this faith, we are not qualified for Kevala Bhakti. Yes. So, Krishna may kill me or he, he can maintain me. I'm okay with both. Because we can see in modern society of Krishna consciousness, there is so much concern. Uh, and, and, and they proclaim you to be irresponsible if you, <laughs> if you uh, uh, don't have a job, if you just perform kirtan. Um, how will you maintain your life? Have you heard such thoughts? Yes, you're irresponsible. You uh, expect Krishna to serve you. <laughs> That's a strong one, strong argument. Uh, so you expect Krishna that he will serve you. But uh, actually it is described that we should perform only service. Uh, this, the servant who is completely dependent on his master, um, doesn't expect the master to, to serve him. But uh, he doesn't have any other, other things to do, just to serve. Yes. And then depends on the master if he'll give him some food and shelter. It's completely dependent on the master. Yes. And there is another story um, which illustrates ill motives or not pure motives. There was a great yogi um, with mystic powers, uh, but he also didn't have a um, real desire for spiritual advancement, but to gain some, something material. And so he went to a king and he said, I can uh, enter Samadhi for, for, uh, for half a year. I have such a power. And king said, really? <laughs> I would like to see this, uh, your power to, to enter Samadhi for, for so long. Um, and uh, this yogi said, okay, I'll do it if you uh, promise me uh, six elephants and ten horses <laughs> for, for this feat that I can do this. And <clears throat> uh, King said, okay, I'll give you six elephants and ten horses if you, if you perform this, uh, if, if you enter Samadhi really for half a year. And so uh, he really uh, went into Samadhi uh, he entered Samadhi and it happened that after a few after a month or two uh, the neighboring king uh, declared war against this king and, and, and defeated him and threw him out of, of, of the country and then he was uh, searching in, in the palace uh, what, what's there and on one door it was a big lock and he, he thought, oh, this must be something really, really precious. So he uh, ordered that this lock should be broken. And so they broke in and they saw a, a yogi in a samadhi. <laughs> and he thought, oh, this must be a, a guru of this uh, previous king. Uh, <clears throat> so he worshipped him very, very... Uh, diligently every day and uh, with, with all his attention and, and, and uh, 
proper procedure. Uh, and he saw this person is in complete samadhi for so long. Uh, and then after half a year, this yogi came out of samadhi. And first thing he said, uh, give me horses <laughs> and elephants. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it didn't matter how long he, he stayed in some, some, some position. Uh, some bodily position or mental position even uh, but uh, still his these desires remain in the heart yes. so uh, even if you perform devotional service according to rules and regulations but if we don't have proper attitude for pure devotional service for kevala bhakti these desires will remain for infinite time in our heart. Yes. So we should understand this, that these desires will not go away artificially. We should, uh, we should surrender to Krishna and, 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 and back Krishna with uh, um, shedding our tears in, at least in our heart, we should shed our tears and, and beg Krishna, please help me, please help me. I don't want to get rid of these desires. I want to get rid of these desires. Help me. I'm helpless. I'm completely helpless. I cannot get rid of these desires myself. It's not possible. And Krishna himself declares it's not possible. So um, without such an approach, there is no possibility. No possibility. And we gave yesterday the example of Narottam Dasak, who is mm, topmost devotee, but he still uh, constantly prays that Krishna will help him destroy obstacles on the path of devotional service. What is our position? What is our position? And there is another example of, of, of this difference between just performing some some ritualistic activity or uh, uh, or uh, perform pure devotional service these are <clears throat> example of this yagi brahmanas from vrindavan they performed very elaborate rituals and sacrifices but not for krishna's pleasure but to attain svargaloka to attain heavenly planets. And um, what happened? Krishna wanted to show uh, his mercy to them and, and sent his uh, cowherd boyfriends uh, to, to get some food from them. Uh, and this is perfection of life to give food to Krishna. But they didn't want to give anything. Uh, to Krishna. They didn't say yes and they didn't say no. <laughs> so they just ignored these cowherd boys. Uh, although they were brahmanas and brahmanas should know what, uh, what is spiritual and what is material and what is uh, our goal of life and what is not. Brahmanas are natural uh, gurus of a society. But then uh, these boys came to, to the wives of these brahmanas and they ran with the most delicious food to offer it to Krishna. Uh, and then uh, these brahmanas realized, yes, uh, our wives are uh, unlimitedly more advanced than we are. How it's possible? They couldn't understand. Uh, they didn't they didn't uh, live in the ashram of a guru. They, uh, they uh, didn't study Shastra. Um, they didn't perform any austerities. How it's possible that these simple women can achieve the highest perfection that is described in Shastra, but we didn't. We didn't even re recognize the Supreme Lord. 
But these simple women uh, who didn't perform any austerities, any, any practice whatsoever, they achieved perfection. How is it possible? And how it's possible? Do you have any idea? Yes, they had association. Uh, maybe not with bridge buses directly, but those um, vendor ladies, merchant ladies, who went to Vrindavan, <laughs> and they described Krishna, Krishna's pastimes. They heard Shravanam, Kirtanam, uh, is the most powerful process, more powerful than all austerities, all uh, fasting, anything like this. <laughs> Uh, more, more powerful than living in the ashram of a guru <laughs> is Shravanam Kirtanam. Of course, we should accept Shravanam Kirtanam Guru <laughs> that, we, that he engages us in Shravanam Kirtanam. Yes. Shravanam Kirtanam, Smaranam, these are most powerful processes. So, these simple ladies who didn't perform any austerities who didn't undergo any, any um, spiritual education even. Um, the topmost devotees, because uh, they were completely dedicated for Krishna's pleasure. So this should be our life, Kevala Bhakti, only pure devotional service. Only pure devotional service. This should be our meditation, our goal, our hankering, our, our constant prayer. If, if we don't strive for this, we'll miss the unique opportunity. Unique opportunity. Lord Chaitanya came. And he comes only once in a day of Brahma. That means 8 billion, 60, 640 million years. <laughs> Can you imagine how long period? And we just we, we just live in his time, actually. We are part of his pastimes. And if we miss this, we completely destroy our opportunity for millions and billions of years. It's craziness. It's craziness. So please take it seriously. Give our bhakti. It should be our only hankering, only prayer, only desire in our life. And if you have anything else, uh, that means that uh, we should get rid of it. And, and if we don't have this hankering to get rid of these desires, then we are most unfortunate living entities possible. Because we came so close, it's just a step, but we don't do this step. Final step. <laughs> yes. So we should take it seriously. And therefore our chanting, which is the process for this age, should be completely dedicated. Don't compromise your chanting. Yes. Don't compromise your chanting. Don't look on your phone during your chanting. Don't discuss with other people. Don't do anything else. Just cry for Krishna. Yes. During your chanting. Dedicate your life to chanting. This is your only hope. This is our only hope. No other hope. And chanting of the holy name, but, uh, but with completely dedicated heart. Not looking through the window. Not do anything else. Just to devote your heart to Krishna. You, uh, through chanting. Yes. And of course, for the, such chanting, we need proper association, we need proper understanding to hear about Kevala Bhakti and Bhagavatam uh, time and again uh, focus our attention on Kevala Bhakti, on pure devotional service. So we should take it very seriously um, and don't miss this golden opportunity. Hare Krishna.
Is there any question or comment? Yes. Yes. Enthusiasm is described by Rupa Goswami in Upadeshamrita as first requirement for devotional service. Utsaha nishaya darya tat tat karma pravartana sangat yagat satoviti shadvir bhakti prasidati. But before he explains this verse, this is a third verse of Upadeshamrita. First he explains. Uh, two things. One are urges of the body. Urges of the body. Vacha vegam, manasah kroda vegam, jihva vegam, udara pasta vegam, etan vegan yo vishakhita dira, sarvam apimam pritivim sasishyat. The first are the urges of the body and if we don't control these urges of the body uh, and engage them in, in devotional service, uh, it's not possible actually uh, to really start devotional service. And we, dis- we mentioned this yesterday, I believe. Uh, Krishna explains this in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Tani sarvani samyamya yukta sita matpara vashehi asyindrani tasya pargapatishtita. That senses are so strong that uh, can delude even an a, a advanced person who tries very hard to control them. But the, the, the solution is tani sarvani samyamya yukta sita matpara that we engage them in devotional service uh, and, uh, and accept Krishna as our only goal matpara yes uh, and basically what it, uh, Krishna is teaching that we should take the process of kevala bhakti of pure devotional service and then this um, uh, these desires will be uprooted. So first we have to understand that these desires which are uh, born also with urges of the body are detrimental for my life and so I control these urges of the body but not dry with my power but by surrendering. If we try to, to by our power to control these urges will be completely defeated. Maybe for some time we can control them, but will be defeated. Yes, because there will be no higher taste. But if we completely take shelter of Krishna and, and, and beg him for help, as we just described in this lecture, uh, then Krishna will protect us. Yes, because we are completely uh, his dependents. We should understand this. Uh, in, in the Bible it is said that Krishna is jealous, uh, not Krishna, but God is jealous God. <laughs> One would think that this is a bad quality. Uh, but this means that uh, he don't take he doesn't take personal care for someone who, who, who depends on anything else but him. Then he allows us to, to execute our, our life according to our desires. Um, but if we depend completely on him, he will take personal care of us. Yes. Um, Yes. Therefore, we should take in, in controlling this uh, urge of speech, urge of, uh, of, of, of anger and, and, and mind and, and uh, tongue and belly and genitals uh, for his pleasure, uh, with this goal to attain pure devotional service and taking his shelter. And then he explains six items that destroy devotional service. So. First are these urges of the body, and then six items that will destroy. Atyahara prayasa shaprajalpaniya madraha. 
Jana Sangha Shalolyamcha Shadbir Bhakti Vinashati. Vinashati means destroy. So that means Atyahara um, means eating too much or collecting too much things. And this is not just collecting or eating with the tongue, uh, but engage in, in, in sense gratification unnecessarily. That means we want to enjoy uh, pleasant sounds, we want to enjoy pleasant uh, scenery to, to see, um, something to touch very nicely. This is all Atyahara, and it will destroy our devotional service uh, if it's not meant for service. Uh, prayasa means to open an endeavor for material achievements. And it, it goes so far um, that um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, in his comment to this verse, he explains to even perform <coughs> two um, demanding, uh, uh, to organize two demanding uh, festivals, even for Krishna. <laughs> It will take our our uh, our uh, mm, <coughs> consciousness away of devotional service, and we become um, a paradis if we invite too many devotees to our house, <coughs> for example, uh, and gives example of 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 Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya, uh, who uh, who said to the Lord Krishna uh, to Chaitanya that. He should come alone to his to, uh, to lunch to his house because if uh, usually ten sannyasis uh, went with Lord Chaitanya because all of these sannyasis, amongst who uh, were great devotees like like uh, Swarup Damodar Goswami and other great devotees actually, not Mayavad sannyasis were uh, hankering around with Lord Chaitanya. Only the, 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 the topmost devotees. But um, Sarah Obama Bhattacharya invited only Lord Chaitanya and he uh, argued that if everyone will come, I will become a paradi because then I cannot serve everyone properly. Understand the, the, the point? If we cannot properly serve our guests, we are a paradis. Yes, we commit Vaishnava Aparat. So it's not uh, beneficial to invite too many devotees to the house. <laughs> because we cannot uh, take proper care for, uh, of everyone. Yes, so um, Prayasa and then Prajalpa to gossip, to gossip or to speak nonsense. Is, is detrimental for our devotional service. Uh, <clears throat> Niyamagraha, to perform uh, some activities just because it's social convention uh, to perform them, um, or not to perform what is necessary for devotional service. This is all Niyamagraha. Um, uh, and, and to keep material association, this is one of the most detrimental things. To keep a material association or even devotees who, uh, who doesn't strive, who doesn't long for pure devotional service. Then this devotee association is even worse than association of, of materialists. Because we'll get these ideas that uh, mixed devotional service is also okay. And this is most detrimental. So we should keep association of devotees who really strive, who long, who pray for just for pure devotional service, not for something um, compromised. Yes. Um, and to have uh, different material desire, to hanker for material, uh, different material things, is lowlyam. Yes. And when we uh, properly avoid and properly control our senses and properly avoid uh, these detrimental things to, by completely taking shelter, then enthusiasm will be always there. 
Um, then enthusiasm will be there. And then we can also practice all other, other items that are uh, beneficial for uh, our devotional service. Yes. That we are convinced. Um, otherwise, we will not be convinced um, because we will not see result in our life. We will see no results. Yes. So, is this okay? Hare Krishna. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Hare Krishna. So, the question is um, how does one think or feel, or how can we actually uh, notice or see that somebody is performing the pure devotional service? Mm, yes. Um, it's not possible for us <laughs> to, to know, uh, at, at least um, in the beginning. If we associate with certain people, we can see by, by their words, by their action, um, by their way of thinking. We can see, uh, uh, are they striving for pure devotional service? Or they think it's everything okay, even if uh, some sense enjoyment here and there, no problem. Some um, unnecessary, unnecessary sense enjoyment. Yes, because many sense enjoyment are maybe necessary, and it can be used in devotional service. Um, yes, therefore we, we honor Prasad regularly because this is needed, uh, sense gratification. <laughs> uh, and if we live according to, to our uh, principles, we can engage, in, if we are Grihastas, for example, in, in um, regulated uh, sense enjoyment and so on but we can see even this regulated sense enjoyment um, shouldn't be excessive and um, we should understand that any kind of sense enjoyment if it, if it is devoid of um, service attitude uh, is, is detrimental for my life so we should understand this and try to see other devotees. Uh, that doesn't mean that we blaspheme devotees who are not, who has no, no pure uh, attitude. Uh, uh, and that we completely avoid them. We can also, of course, have their association, but not... Um, intimate association. Uh, that means that we don't give our heart to, to them. We try to give them our association if we really strive for Kevala Bhakti. Uh, but we don't take uh, their ideas. So we don't give our heart to them. It's explained by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. We, even if we have association which is not proper, we shouldn't give them our heart. Yes. It's somehow or other, we uh, have to have some, uh, some association. Even with the devotee who, who has a, a material job, has to associate him in with gross materialists. Uh, but it's strictly business association, not, not heart-to-heart association. Yes. Is this okay? Hare Krishna. Yes. Hari Age, um, can you say that if you just dedicate your life to God?
because it's very limiting how can you do such a thing there's so many things to experience and do but if it's just only God it's very limited how do you argue against this? Mm. L- very limiting in uh, possibility to experience life or Yes, um, if one is wise, he uh, knows that he experienced everything <laughs> already. Uh, if one is sane person, he will not indulge in experiencing hard drugs if he's sane just for experience uh, mm, sake <laughs> or one will not uh, try to experience in jumping uh, from the cliff uh, into shallow water uh, maybe some people experience this with grave consequences <laughs> but why we, sh- we, we should uh, indulge in such experiences it's craziness, it's not s- sanity. So, if we know uh, there are different kinds of people, and it is uh, the proverb s- uh, goes like this that uh, experience is the best teacher. And what is the other part of this proverb? And only fools doesn't, uh, don't learn other way. <laughs> <laughs> only fools uh, don't learn other way so we shouldn't be fools that we should experience everything and, and be punished for every nonsense we perform so we should learn other way um, so if, if a father says don't put your hand into the fire we shouldn't put our hand into a fire just to experience the pain <laughs> that we'll receive. It is foolishness. Foolishness. So we should follow uh, instructions of the Supreme Father because he says, Bhoktaram yagya tapasan sarva loka mahishwaram sukhridam sarva bhutanam gatvamam shantim richati. I'm the well wisher of every living entity. And we can experience, practice. Uh, practically in our life we can experience that this is true and therefore we take it uh, take it uh, with faith that he's the benefactor of every living entity and that he is uh, just um, teaching us how to live perfectly and, and attain the highest perfection so why would we learn uh, the hard way with, with beatings <laughs> of this nature that means that we have no proper intelligence, that we are foolish. And so those who are foolish can try and get beaten again and again and again. And maybe uh, after, after a certain um, amount of experiences, <laughs> they will realize that this is just foolishness. So we should realize now, why wait? <clears throat> this, uh, even though, because like, say if you dedicate to God, then it's like you're just on a narrow path and then you're waiting for this goal of so much variety with God. But um, on the road to God, it seems very limited in the sense that, uh, like even though you may experience some happiness and distress in the material world, it's still something different. It's still some variety where it seems like when you're just living your life for God, there's no variety. It's just like and and the, this is lack of experience of God consciousness. <laughs> because, for example, uh, before I uh, become a devotee, um, I thought that, uh, that vegetarian food 
I became vegetarian a little before uh, Krishna consciousness, but um, I thought that vegetarian food is really uh, mm, poor, that nothing is there <laughs> to eat. <laughs> I was, uh, when, when my cousin uh, realized that I'm a vegetarian, he asked me, what do you eat? Just uh, bread and, and, uh, and jam or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, this is the way that people think. Uh, but when I, I realized the varieties of, of prasad uh, that much exceed the all varieties of, of this uh, tasteless food which we consumed before, <laughs> we realize that there is so much variety, so much true enjoyment actually on the path of devotional service and it's so sublime this enjoyment and and, uh, and, 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 and uh, really enjoyable because this sense enjoyments uh, which materialists are hankering for are actually extremely tasteless extremely tasteless and therefore and they realize this time and again that these are tasteless I cannot um, squeeze juice out of it uh, b but I try and I try and I try like like this uh, uh, song of, of, of Rolling Stones uh, uh, I can get no satisfaction and I try and I try and I try but I cannot get no satisfaction it's it's craziness actually it's it's really Illusion. I will get satisfaction here, but when I when I, I taste it, it's dry. Yes, no real satisfaction, and they realize this. They are extremely rich people, but they tried, they tried, they tried, but they cannot get any satisfaction. <laughs> but here in Krishna consciousness, people are not generally rich but they enjoy on every step of their life so uh, there is the highest enjoyment in the path of, even path of devotional service uh, and, 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 and for the path of devotional service it is significant that um, uh, it, it's uh, at the same time it's our goal already um, achieved actually um, by, by serving Krishna all perfection is already there so we just have to realize this um, so it's and it's all variety of spiritual world which is must uh, much um, broader than this material experience this material experiences are based only on the mind a perception of the mind and when the mind perceives something as pleasurable we mm, interpret it as pleasurable but when uh, this is only for extremely short time of uh, period of time then we realize that there is no sukha no juice in this and then for, therefore mind goes for other things uh, uh, and everyone experienced this even in sex life if you engage in sex life um, which is considered uh, the, the utmost pleasure of material world uh, if you engage uh, in sex life uh, a lot to, in, to enjoy this you, you'll get no enjoyment anymore you'll be completely frustrated or those who are addicted to, to pornography or something, they don't get any pleasure for, uh, from it. They're just addicted because of, uh, of, of um, conditionings, like those who are addicted to, to alcohol or to hard drugs or, um, or to cigarettes. There's no real pleasure in it, but it's just addiction. Uh, so, if we have these experiences, uh, it is just addiction that we think 
uh, that this particular thing will make me enjoy. But when we enjoy it, we are disappointed. Even during enjoyment period, we are already disappointed and frustrated uh, after this. Therefore, so many people in modern world, because the goal of modern society is to enjoy. And therefore, majority of people are completely frustrated because they try, but they cannot. Yeah. Even if they undergo in so-called enjoyment, they don't get any sukha, don't get any juice from it. And uh, therefore, these mental uh, diseases of modern world are so prominent. Never uh, in the history of humankind uh, so much uh, anxiety and depression uh, as now. Because people have facilities to enjoy, but these enjoyments don't give them any enjoyment, actually. So if we don't realize this by our intelligence, uh, even after hearing, that means that we are just foolish. Yes. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pramanandi Hari Grantara Archumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Krishna Sarmaham.